laboratory ok uh, lab lah makmal kan jadi cikgu percaya lah kat sekolah mestilah ada makmal kamu ada lab kamu dan kamu kena masuk lab dan buat eksperimen uh, if, if I'm not mistaken for biological lab um, it's not really dangerous lah not hazardous to the form 4 or form 5 student dia tak berapa bahaya sangat lah compare to chemical lab Uh, jadi chemical ni lab kimia ni mungkin dia berbahaya sebab you using the uh, chemical substance that hazardous that may be uh, very reactive we will cause explosion or anything lah uh, cikgu pun tak pastilah tapi uh, for laboratory biological laboratory ni this is not really dangerous but sometime uh, it have effect uh, of the microorganism okay microorganism may be If you use uh, uh, death uh, sample, sample kan, uh, death animal, you need to dissect. Uh, maybe they have a contaminations there if you not, you're not careful enough. Okay, laboratory is a places where the uh, you done the experiments and to conduct the scientific investigation. Scientific investigation in safe environments. Of course, anything that we do, we want the safe environment. Environment that will not hurt us as a humans lah. Uh, kita ni sebagai manusia, pasti yang kita nak environment kita uh, healthy, safe. So that we can perform the best we can for the uh, achieving the objective of the experiment. And then they have a protective equipments. Okay. Here we have the protective equipment. What we should wear when our when we entering the lab, and of course we need to take care our personal safety, and how uh, we manage to handle the waste from the experiment. What we do to them to this waste. Apa yang kita buat dengan bahan buangan ni? And then we have the accident. If the accident happen, kadang-kadang kita tak minta benda ni happen berlaku tapi dia berlaku juga uh, what we can do kan we need to do something so that we can minimize or we can make the uh, injury or the effect uh, less worse compared to the uh, it's supposed to be okay uh, we need to take care of the accident and then practice in the safety rules This something that I will try my best to explain ya. Yeah. Uh, saya bukanlah, cikgu bukanlah uh, a very good in this year. Uh, tapi at least untuk form 4, form 5 ni is not really difficult lah. Basically dah selalu sangat masuk lab. This among the thing that you need to know. Of course, when you further study, uh, you using the more uh, complex or more modern device in the laboratory this is something that very basic you need to understand okay the first one is a protective equipment okay protective equipment we have the emergency shower station uh, if you look around your laboratory of course they have emergency shower station shower shower mandi lah kan nah, jadi maksudnya if something happens maybe other chemicals that explode touch your skin or exposed to your shirts exposed to your shoes exposed to your skin then maybe it's the fastest way go to the shower and then open the water lah ha, jadi make the water flow jadi maksudnya terus cepat-cepat pastikan all the chemical tu remove from your skin remove from your shirt kita tak nak dia terus berada pada badan kita jadi that's the emergency shower station Uh, tak apalah memang basah lah tapi nak buat macam mana dah accident benda tu dah berlaku cikgu dulu ada ingat sekali buat eksperimen guna air kencing ok jadi bila guna air kencing ni kita panaskan tiba-tiba meletup beaker tu pecah jadi terpercik lah kepada semua orang yang ada kat meja tu uh, jadi uh, is a very bad memory lah ok uh, bad memory doing the experiment waktu dekat matrikulasi dulu kami pun tak tahu kenapa dia boleh meletup kan ok and then uh, emergency shower chemicals when you expose to the chemical hazardous substance 
that contact to the skin jadi kena pada kulit kita tak nak lah kena pada kulit when it touch the skin it maybe will cause injury to the skin kalau injury to the skin ni kamu rasa sakit ke selesa of course it will give painful to that particular person yang kena kawan kamu ke kan uh, kawan kamu lah kan yang perempuan ke yang lelaki kita tak nak lah kita expose pain to anyone kita tak nak memberi kesakitan kepada sesiapa saja pun jadi we try to help to reduce the effect of the chemical hazardous substance uh, kita cuba elakkan kalau dia boleh menyebabkan kesakitan ke cedera ke kita cuba sedaya upaya elakkan and then we have the eye wash station eye wash station ni basically singki lah ok uh, singki tu Pergilah kat singki tu kan Singki tu yang paling banyak sekali dalam lab Memang banyak lah singki Buka air tu Ataupun dia ada pipe ke Guna pipe tu Lepas tu cepat-cepat muka tu Ataupun mata tu Supaya nanti it will Remove all the hazardous chemical That exposed to the eye Jadi kita tak nak lah uh, Something bad happen to our friends Because we take a very slow action Very late action Haa uh, Apabila benda tu berlaku And then kita ada fume hoods uh, This one of the device One of the thing that uh, Very important in the lab Okay, fume hoods Fume hood ni something that we do Ni banyak dalam uh, chemical lab lah ya yeah? Something that uh, evolve a reaction Between one chemical to another chemical It produce the hazardous gas Okay, produce the hazardous gas Or produce a bad smell or produce something that is not good or dangerous to the humans then we do inside the fume hoods because it will suck all the air out from that part lah ha, jadi dia akan sedut semua keluar daripada kawasan tu yang kita doing the experiment tu jadi dia, dia to avoid breathing the hazardous gas, gas okay hazard, hazard, hazardous gas Example of the gases, we have the chlorine, bromine, nitrogen dioxide. Okay, this is an example. And then we have the laminar flow cabinet. Okay, uh, laminar flow cabinet ni, uh, they, they can provide the clean area, working area. For example, maybe the person that doing the experiment on the microbes, they want to have a pure culture of certain microorganism. Jadi dia ada medium dia, dia nak pastikan medium tu medium yang dia sedia tu prepared tu ada satu jenis microorganism saja. Dia tak nak microorganism yang lain. Uh, please ya, yeah, take note that in our environment we have so many different kind of microorganism. Ah uh, maybe ada E. coli lah, ada salmonella, ada macam-macam lah kita tak tahu on, on our environment. Tapi bila dia ada satu medium yang have a nutrient there have a vitamin there have a suitable condition there they maybe want to infest want to contaminate that media jadi sekarang ni medium yang kita nak guna ni adalah untuk certain bacteria saja jadi kita nak pastikan our working area tu very clean jadi kita boleh doing the experiment inside the lamina floor cabinet sebab lamina floor cabinet ni dia akan dia ada technology how to kill all the Uh, bacteria all the microorganism in the surrounding environment biological safety cabinet uh, this one also we can work with pathogen ok everything that we want to do the experiment maybe it will uh, uh, cause a, a danger to the human we can do in the biological safety cabinet of course the first personal safety you, uh, if you do the experiment that Uh, maybe can explode ok explode uh, you can wear go goggle lah ok kita pakai elasmi mata kan pakai penutup mata tu uh, to uh, reduce the injury uh, if something explode it will touch it will go to our eyes directly jadi we uh, wear the goggle Come, and then the fa face mask the face mask because we want to avoid inhaling the dangerous gases or hazardous gases okay uh, because the face mask itself is very good in protecting ourselves from ingesting inhaling that particular gases 
okay glove uh, when, when we handling the uh, death organism of course we wear the glove or something that dirty that we want we do not want to handling using our skin our uh, hand then we can wear the glove and of course we need to hand wash after we doing the experiments maybe it touch our skin maybe the chemical mm, not that really dangerous touch our skin or maybe we handling the dead organism we need to wash our hands so that it clean from any of the bacteria contaminations okay kena pastikan cuci tangan because the soap itself have the very good ability to kill the microorganism of course you need to wear the lab coats Okay, lab coat is very important because if you uh, entering the lab, we doesn't know what we going to do. Maybe it involve the dirty work, maybe it involve a chemical, maybe it involve the blood, the urines. Then it protect our uh, our skin at the body. Okay, the lab coat itself is quite thick compared to our clothes. Okay, our uniform is quite thick. And then, of course, they are uh, long sleeve, right? They're long sleeve. Uh, then, so the lab coat is uh, necessary to wear when you entering the lab. Uh, benda ni memang kena pakai lah. Uh, kemudian, lab shoes. Lab shoes ni tak ada lah specifically lab shoes. Kamu pakai kasut sekolah tu pun dah boleh sebenarnya. It consider to close uh, all the surface of the uh, our uh, shoe our shoe pula our kaki lah ok uh, the personal safety jadi goggle face mask glove this particular thing ni ikut situation ok according to the situation what experiment you do jadi kalau tak perlu pakai tak payah pakai lah uh, face mask pun sama contohnya macam tu kamu buat lab fizik saja yang melibatkan pergerakan benda saja mungkin tak payah pakai face mask sebab dia not producing hazardous gases jadi tak payah pakai lah uh, not to worry too much tapi lab coat dengan shoes ni is a necessary pergilah mana-mana pun sambung belajar macam mana pun lab coat and lab shoes is necessary is compulsory to wear when you enter the uh, lab And then we have the waist, okay? Uh, but the waist, we have a dispose. We can dispose into the sink, okay? Certain type of waste, of course, we can dispose into the sink. Uh, for example, waste that pH between 5 to 9, okay? This is not really acidic or not really alkali. The the acid itself, the pH uh, is weak weak for acid weak for alkali that means it will not have a reaction with the sink itself kan kalau kita put uh, we try to dispose very acidic solution into the sink maybe that acid will react with the plastic of the sink or the metal of the sink and then it will dia terpercik ke kena kat muka ha, jadi berlubang muka nanti kan it's uh, very dangerous to do jadi please make sure something that very acidic very alkali not to throw into the sink kita jangan buang dalam sink kemudian low concentration liquid and solution ha, jadi contohnya kalau, kalau macam biological student ni mungkin kamu uh, guna glucose solution air gula kan air garam jadi tak ada masalah lah dia low concentration ni air gula kamu letak satu sudu gula saja dia tak tak teruk sangat jadi boleh buang dalam sinki you can dispose into the sink and then cannot dispose into the sink we have for example organic solvent acetone alcohol benzene ok this organic solvent you cannot uh, this one is uh, wrong is C right ok organic solvent and then the substance pH value less than 5 more than 9 If too alkali or too acidic please do not dispose into the sink ok there is certain rules you need to follow lah kenapa kita kena follow rules and regulation ni supaya it will not harm us when we do the experiment kalau dia tak cederakan kita kemungkinan dia cederakan kawan-kawan kita kalau kita tak follow the rules and regulation 
Rules and regulation ni sebenarnya untuk pastikan keselamatan diri kita Our, our own safety Kalau tak keselamatan diri kita pun Keselamatan orang sekeliling kita Kita tak nak sesuatu yang berlaku Yang boleh mencederakan, menyakitkan Kita minta lah tak nak benda tu berlaku Okay And then the chemicals Acid, grease, oil Please do not dispose into the sink You cannot dispose this thing Maybe it will clog Or it it will block the sink. Kita tak tahu. Mungkin the oil itself, the grease itself, they accumulate, they harden, they block the sink. Jadi bila they block the sink, orang yang kemudian buka air, air itu akan bertakung dalam sink tu. Jadi dia tak boleh guna dah sink tu. Daripada tujuh yang ada dekat lab tu, tiga dah tersumbat, tinggal empat je lagi. Kan? Jadi dah difficult to others. Kita dah menyusahkan orang lain tak boleh nak guna sink. Jadi tolonglah don't be selfish. Jangan pentingkan diri sendiri kita nak mudah kita buang dalam tu sahaja. Okay, follow the rules and regulation. And then the solid waste. We cannot throw into the sink. For example, the chemical glasses rubber. Uh, getah ke sarung tangan ke kan. Glove yang kita guna kita buang dalam sink tu. Kalau dia tak nak masuk kita jol- jolok dia bagi dia masuk. We cannot do that. We, we will make the sink damage the sink jadi kita tak nak lah benda tu berlaku uh. kemudian heavy metal mercury mercury itself uh, I believe lah you will not handling the mercury or doing experiment involving the mercury except for thermometer uh, thermometer ni mungkin digunakan dan sometimes kalau yang accident happen thermometer ni drop and it break bila drop break the mercury itself release from the bulb of the thermometer jadi that particular accident very dangerous lah sebab mercury itself is uh, what we call toxic to the human body dia uh, toxic if I'm not mistaken dia carcinogenic substance to the human body it will cause uh, mutation ok uh, in the process of uh, meiosis or mitosis Uh, please make sure that this uh, thing never happen lah. Be careful when you handling the the thermometer itself. Okay. Tapi banyak thermometer sekarang ni dia dah tukar dia tak guna mercury. Mungkin dia guna alcohol. Mungkin dia guna something else that less harms to the humans when accident happen. Okay. Mercury ni dia quite dangerous. And then the volatile substance, toxic substance. Organic waste For example The microorganism Microorganism ni macam mana Dapat organic waste ni Sometimes the medium use Kita nak culturekan Microorganism ni We use the certain certain medium Tapi bila dia tak nak guna Kita sumbat dalam Sink ni uh, It's not supposed to do You not supposed to do that lah Okay And then the carcass The dead organism lah Reactive substance Of course you cannot throw Dispose into the sink Radioactive substance Radioaktif lagi lah bahaya kan Okay and then the waste uh, bi- my Managing biological waste Yang ini semua ni Dia basically on general Macam mana kita nak dispose What we can dispose into sink What we can dispose into sink And then we go specifically for the Biological waste Jadi dia ada four category of biological waste We have the category A B, C and D For A is sharp object, okay. B not sharp. C animal carcass. D liquids. Ha. Kau cik gu tersalah pronounce minta maaf lah ya. Ha. Cik gu ni bukan very good in English, tapi boleh lah. Okay, nak mengajar dua language program ni boleh lah. Kita faham lah sebab waktu degree dulu, waktu matrikulasi pun semua belajar dalam bahasa Inggeris or in English. Okay, uh, it's supposed to help a lot lah kalau kamu learn apa ni, biology in English during your form 4 or form 5 Okay, tapi kalau tak belajar pun tak apa boleh saja. okay uh, jadi minta maaf lah kalau pronunciation tu quite weird pelik sikit dengar kan, tapi tak upaya lah, this is me, this is my ability, this is the highest skill that I can give explain to all of you Okay, we have A, sharp Example, shrink, needle, glass Okay, jadi glass tu mungkin break down Pecah Jadi, 
uh, dia berbahaya lah ok uh, dia we need to dispose it we need to manage it put it in the special bin ok uh, bin no need sterile jadi kita tak perlu sterile sterile ni ada mesin sterilization process lah dia ada mesin dia kemungkinan kita letak dalam mesin tu dia akan guna apa ni steam steam and heat to kill all the microorganism itu tak payah buat untuk uh, A kategori A and then we have the category B not sharp example biological solid waste ok biological solid waste uh, for example glove tissue petri dish jadi uh, management autoclave resistant ok jadi we need to put inside the autoclave resistant biohazard plastic bag this one you can refer to textbook yeah? everything everything inside this note that I use is a referring to the textbook uh, saya tak guna buku-buku lain semua ni buku rujukan ke buku uh, apa ni foundation ke buku degree ke tak guna ni semua berdasarkan refer to textbook jadi kamu boleh tengok lah autoclave resistant biohazard plastic bag jadi maksudnya dia plastic bag saja. ok kemudian kita letakkan all the uh, biological solid waste ni inside the plastic bag Sebab apa? Sebab kita nak masuk ke dalam uh, autoclave. Supaya kita dapat kill all the bacteria. Okay, contamination. Or the the, the microorganism. Okay, ha. Jadi sebab tu dia panggil autoclave. Autoclave ni lah autoclave machines. Jadi mesin ni kita letakkan bahan-bahan yang mana kita nak uh, remove all the bacterial contamination. Kita tak nak ada bacteria dekat situ. And then we have the animal carcass Example, animal carcass lah Dead animals um, Yang dah mati kan Mungkin kamu buat katak Bedah katak sebab nak tengok jantung dia macam mana You dissect the frogs To see the respiratory system of the frogs Jadi nak tengok jantung dia Nak tengok peparu dia Macam-macam lah Jadi Dead uh, animals Of course need to be killed Kita kena bunuh that particular animal So that we can operate, we can dissect them takkan kita nak belah hidup-hidup kan ha. organ, the tissue management, wrap using the tissue paper put in the biohazard plastic bag, jadi yang ni tak perlu masuk dalam autoclave masuk dalam autoclave pun keluar sama jugalah, sebab apa? sebab dead animal ni will attract the uh, microorganism ok, they will attract the micro confirm, sebab apa? sebab akan berlaku pereputan Ok, uh, decomposition process will happen to the deaths, to the carcass ni, so that it will turn back to the soil lah, supposedly. Ok, uh, jadi tak perlu masuk dalam autoclave. Yang this one kena masuk dalam autoclave so that it can kill all the microorganism. Autoclave ni, function utama dia adalah to uh, sterile the... Uh, the... biological solid waste ni lah, ok biohazard plastic bag and then froze it and then of course lah after froze it they have a, a laboratory assistant will uh, maybe put it on the certain uh, places lah will tanam dia ke apa ke kan and then liquid example we have the mediums medium for the culture bacterial culture kita nak culture culture tu maksudnya apa kita nak biak jadi banyak Ok, kita nak biak jadi banyak We want to have more uh, Populations of that microorganism nah, Jadi kita letakkan dalam medium ni Medium ni ada all the nitro, all the nutrient Needed by the uh, microorganism For example, the medium of blood Jadi blood ni boleh digunakan sebagai medium For that microorganism To grow from one generation to another generation This uh, liquid, you need to autoclave it ok so that we can kill all the microorganism we doesn't want the populations of the microorganism exposed to the environment kita dah biar jadi banyak kemudian bila kita tak guna kita buang macam tu saja dekat tempat tu nanti banyak microorganism sebab apa? sebab kita tak bunuh dia ha, that we doesn't want lah kemudian jadi outbreak pula kat sekolah tu ramai pula tercemar kan kemudian ada makcik lina ke apa ke pergi pegang pula kemudian dia kerja dekat kantin pula kita tak nak benda-benda macam tu berlaku Disebabkan kita Satu sekolah sakit The whole school Have a sickness kan Have Sick 
Ha, tu sekolah sakit Tak nak macam tu And then What we do If accident happen Okay Accident happen Caused by the carelessness Biasalah ni kan ha, Bukan kamu je careless ya Kadang cikgu yang mengajar banyak kali pun Buat eksperimen banyak kali pun Kadang kita careless juga Tak upaya lah Tambah-tambah kalau Semua benda kita nak buat Okay Kita nak buat yang itu Kita nak buat yang ini Semualah benda kita nak buat It will Cause carelessness Kita akan cuai nanti Jadi kita kena fokus satu-satu Buat satu-satu Siap Then we move to uh, Other part And then negligence Okay And then lack of Skill Step to handle Chemical spill Inform the teacher de Declare spill area Restricted zone Prevent spill Spreading using sand Okay jadi kita elakkan spill tu tumpahan tu uh, merebak lagi jauh gunakan pasir. Uh, we use the sand lah. Scoop the sand using the suitable tool. Jadi kita scoop the sand. Jadi kalau chemical spill, spill yang tak bahaya lah tumpahan ki, bahan kimia yang tak bahaya. Apa pun the most important part please inform the teacher. Then of course the teacher will know what to do. Contohnya nak cari Pasir kan kat mana nak cari pasir Of course the teacher will know Location of the sand itself Jadi panggil cikgu dulu lah Ikutlah nasihat dia Kemudian dispose it And then the mercury spill yeah, We do number one and number two Okay uh, Number one, number two We sprinkle the sulfur To cover the mercury And then we call the bomba Okay uh, Bomba jadi mercury spill ni dia quite dangerous lah Jadi mercury ni Rarely ada kat dalam makmal Okay Rarely exist inside the laboratory lah Except for the thermometer uh, That's why you need to be very careful handling the thermometer Tapi cikgu percaya dah ramai lah thermometer dekat sekolah ni Dah upgrade dia tak guna dah Thermometer yang ada mercury ni They using the alcohol one And then we have the practice in safety rules. Uh, for example, the clothing generals. Uh, pakaian lah. Jadi, pakaian ni, clothing ni, pakaian. Dia sambung satu lagi ke situ. Clothing. Of course, you need to wear something that uh, suitable where you enter the uh, lab. And then, the general uh, in safety rules. We have the supervision. Of course, you need to make sure that the teacher is there to handle, to to supervise all the experiment being done by the student. Supposedly, you cannot enter the lab without the teacher uh, assistant. Tak, kalau cikgu tak ada, tak boleh masuk lab sebenarnya. Cikgu tak tahu lah kat sekolah kamu macam mana ya. Uh, kena ada guru sebab barang-barang dalam lab tu kadang-kadang mahal. Very expensive. Jadi kalau sesuka hati masuk lab Tiba-tiba hilang Jadi nak tuduh siapa Siapa yang ada kat dalam lab tu lah Akan dituduh Okay Jadi be careful lah Supposedly teacher must be present During the experiment Or the laboratory assistant Must be present during the experiment Of course you need to wash your hand Okay Please make sure you wash your hand After doing the experiment After touching something Wash your hand The soap itself is very cheap Sabun murah kedai jimat RM2 tak ada jual kan. Jadi, please make sure that you wash your hand. No irrelevant item. Jadi, kurangkan bawa irrelevant item. Uh, ada dengan bekas makanannya, ada dengan airnya. Tak payah bawa lah. Kita bukannya nak makan dalam lab. Okay. Uh, this another one lah. Jadi, Sampai kepada bahagian tu No irrelevant item Sebab bila item tu banyak atas meja Dia ganggu kita nak buat eksperimen It will disturb us uh, Doing the eksperimen Ada barang tu lah Ada barang ni lah Yang tak sepatutnya kena letak dua Ataupun jangan bawa masuk langsung Ataupun tinggal dalam kelas Disinfectant workstation Jadi please make sure that Maybe we have the disinfectant spray We can spray And then It will kill all the bacteria on the surface of the workstation. Dispose waste. Uh, correctly lah. Dispose waste correctly. Uh, what we can dispose into the sink. What we cannot dispose into the sink. What we need to the ins we need to put inside the bin. 
what we need to put inside the auto cleave biohazard hazards uh, plastic uh, and then not drinking and eating this is very important sometimes the student they take this lightly uh, dia anggap benda ni tak penting sangat not drinking and eating even for the teacher are not allowed to eat inside the laboratory sebab apa dalam laboratory ni kita doing experiment for example involving the bacteria ok jadi bila involving the bacteria kita pula tak disinfectant the workstation jadi pegang sesuka hati kemudian kita makan jadi it will cause contamination it will cause sickness to us Ya, tempat yang paling tak boleh sekali makan adalah inside the laboratory even for the teacher cannot eat and drink inside the laboratory lah safety symbol before use jadi we need to observe we need to understand the safety symbol before we use for example the chemical substance lah very important maybe the chemical itself evaporate easily or they are flammable Okay, flammable, the mudah terbakar. Jadi, please make sure that we know to put a fire source far away from that chemical. If the fire occur, what we do? Stop work. Okay, kalau berlaku kebakaran, berhenti bekerja. Switch off everything. Pergi cepat-cepat. Tutup uh, switch lampu, tutup switch kret, uh, apa ni, kipas, tutuplah switch semua yang ada. Exit laboratory using as emergency exit plan. Kat mana emergency exit plan ni? Dia selalu tulis kat atas tu. Pintu tu atas tu ada emergency exit plan. Ha, dia selalunya akan berwarna lah. Berwarna pula. Dia menyala lampu. Not panic, stay calm. Ha, jadi kita kena tengok keadaan sekeliling, kena stay calm. Ha, jadi takut nanti ramai orang yang panik, dia berlari sana, berlari sini, dia terlanggar api itu, dia terlanggar, tercedera kita kena stay calm macam mana kita nak elakkan daripada that situation not to return inside the laboratory ok, not to return ni easy lah assemble at the assembly point ha, jadi, cikgu pastilah kat sekolah masing-masing, ada akan anda buat apa ni, uh, kecemasan punya practice tu, kecemasan kebakaran punya practice And then handling glasses, uh, chemical, be cautious, handling hot glassware. Jadi, kita kena hati-hati, be cautious, handling the gloss glass, hot glassware. Antara yang penting, jangan melawak sangatlah ya dengan kawan-kawan waktu dalam lab. Tambah-tambah bila kawan-kawan tu pegang benda-benda yang panas ni. Uh, when they are handling hot glassware, kita pergi cuik dia ke, pergi melawak dengan dia ke, pergi geletik dia ke. That's something that very dangerous to do. Kalau dia gelak-gelak-gelak, tertumpah benda panas tu atas kamu. Macam mana? Okay? Uh, don't be stupid lah. Jangan jadi tak pun nak cerdik doing that particular thing. Uh, cikgu dulu waktu um, matikulasi dulu. Kami ada handling uh, Doing the experiment using ice uh, Kawan-kawan ni kadang dia suka lah Nak melawak Dia ambil ice tu ketul Dia masuk dalam baju uh, Ambil ice tu masuk dalam baju kan uh, Ada tu buat masuk dalam seluar lagi Okay please don't don't do that lah Kemudian report damage apparatus Clip flammable, flammable chemical from fire source Not to touch, smell, taste chemical directly Ini benda ni please do not do kita kenapa kita tak nak buat benda ni supaya it will not cause injury dizziness something that not good for us when we do the experiment and then handling live specimen use glove appropriately specimen are not harmful uh, we uh, bury them frozen kita tanam lah wash hand before and after clean surface disinfectant jadi kawasan-kawasan tu ada ada darah ke kan ada daging dia ke ada najis dia ke kita kemaskanlah kita cuci bagi elok kita jangan tinggalkan macam tu jadi bila kita tinggalkan dia macam tu dia akan ada bacterial contamination kemudian kemudian dia akan produce bad order ok uh, foul order nanti from that uh, workbench lah and then we have an emergency we inform the teacher call the bomber remove the victim treatment place accident as a restricted area then we finish lah uh, all the necessary things necessary understanding about the laboratory okay hopefully uh, you can understand 
I try my best to explain ya Saya dah cuba sedaya upaya untuk terangkan Dengan cara yang paling mudah sekali lah Saya pun tak pasti sama ada saya boleh campur ke tak Bahasa Inggeris Bahasa Melayu ni okay. Kamu boleh komen lah uh, Boleh lah tahu kata Saya nak bahasa Inggeris semua ke Boleh cikgu ajar sekarang ni Campur-campur pun tak ada masalah Saya boleh faham Apa sajalah kamu nak komen Tak ada masalah cikgu boleh terima okay. uh, Kamu boleh Boleh bagi komen lah ya Kemudian kita akan sambung kepada Next is communication